Are you tired of old, boring phone chargers? Don't you hate it when the cable just won't plug into your phone's USB port? Probably not, but anyway, today I'm gonna show you how I made this wireless charging pad. It is made mostly out of real wood, and it works with smartphones that support the Qi wireless charging standard, such as the new iPhones and some newer Android phones. It all started with this single coil wireless charging module that I got from China. It comes fully assembled, so to make a wireless charger, you only need a capable power supply and a box of some kind to contain the electronics. To make sure that the board works, I soldered a micro USB port to its power input. Then I connected it to a 5V 2A USB power supply and placed a compatible smartphone on top of the board. It worked without any issues, and it wasn't slow either. The board was drawing about 1.4 amps from the power supply, which was reasonable for a 5 watt wireless charger like this one. Ok, now let me give you a rough idea of how this charging pad is put together. On top is a really thin piece of plywood, so that the charging coil can be placed as close to the phone as possible. This piece is glued to another piece of plywood that is 1 cm thick for durability. The thicker piece has a cutout in the middle for the electronics. Then there is another thicker piece of plywood to which the charging board is attached on four standoffs. This bottom plywood piece is only screwed from underneath. It is not glued so that the device can be opened if it's needed. Finally, four pieces of solid walnut are glued to the top piece of plywood to make the whole thing look fancy. Now let's move on to the building process. This is the thin piece of plywood that I mentioned. It is 2mm thin and it is the thinnest that I have. It is very flexible and easy to cut, but it isn't exactly beautiful. This is why I cut a piece of curly maple veneer, which looks lovely and goes along really well with darker woods such as walnut. I glued the two together and let them dry for a few hours. In the meantime, I used my router to trim a piece of 1 cm plywood to exactly 164 by 84 mm. Then I placed the charging board on top, making sure that the coil was right in the middle. I marked the footprint of the board with a pen, then I used a jigsaw to cut an opening that was slightly bigger. The next step was to glue the thin piece of plywood to the thick one. So I applied a liberal amount of glue and clamped the two together. On the next day, I trimmed the thin plywood piece to match the size of the thicker one. I also made the bottom piece, which was cut slightly smaller. 160 by 80 mm. There is nothing fancy about it, it's just a thick piece of plywood and a thin piece of plywood glued together. I did this because I needed at least 12 mm of thickness for the standoffs to fit. One of the challenges about the whole project was adding a USB power input. After some thinking, I decided to glue together thin layers of plywood and to sandwich a USB breakout board in between them. This actually worked out better than I expected. Once the glue was dry, I cut the excess plywood and ended up with this really neat USB input. Next, I got my bottom piece of plywood and marked an area on one end as big as the USB input. Then I used my router to remove enough material for the power input to lay flush with the surface. I also made a groove for the wire to fit in so that it doesn't get crushed when the top and bottom pieces are screwed together. I glued the USB port with wood glue and the cables I glued inside the groove with plain old hot glue. Once that was done, I drilled 4 holes for the standoffs. The standoffs are simply glued to the bottom piece using strong 2 component glue. I put a generous amount of glue in the holes and then I placed the board inside with the standoffs already screwed onto it. At this point, I decided to screw the top and the bottom pieces together. It was time to glue the side pieces and I wanted to make sure that it was a perfect fit. 
On a piece of walnut, I made a groove just wide enough for the top piece to fit in. I cut two of these pieces and glued them in place. Notice how they're a bit shorter and you'll see why in a moment. The two shorter walnut pieces have the same groove, but it doesn't go all the way to the end of the piece. Otherwise, I would end up with holes on the sides. I used a small chisel to shape the groove until it was a tight fit. After some trimming, sanding and gluing, my project was almost finished. I also made a cutout for the USB port. But there was an important step I hadn't thought of thoroughly. Since the charging board was going to generate some heat while working, I needed some kind of opening for this heat to escape from. The solution was to cut a big hole on the bottom piece, right under the charging board. Then I used my router to make a recess of about 1mm. I took a piece of 1mm walnut veneer and made an improvised grill of sorts. It wasn't a pretty solution, but it was acceptable. It's the bottom and nobody's going to look at it. To reinforce the veneer, I also glued thin strips of wood to it. One final touch was that I added a small piece of veneer around the USB port to hide the plywood layers. Finally, I wiped all the wooden surfaces with a wet piece of paper to remove all the wood dust and applied several coats of spray lacquer. And that's how this project came together. I think it looks pretty good. It's not your typical wireless charger made of boring plastic. So far it's been working well and it takes about 3 hours to charge a 3000 mAh battery. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them below. And in the description you will find a link in case you want to get a wireless charging board similar to this one. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to never miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.